welcome to Finextra TV. We're live at Innovate Finance Global Summit. And kindly joining me now is Hayley Viner, Head of Product at Clearbank. Hayley, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. It's really good to have you on and in person this time, of course. So we've just uh, watched you on your panel session around embedded finance, which we'll talk about in more detail. But first, if you could set the scene for us and highlight some of those emerging trends uh, the event's going to be covering. What do you what can we expect? Absolutely. So obviously, open banking continues to be a trend that we see a lot of people talking about in the market, not just in the UK, but how's it starting to evolve uh, internationally? On the panel, we talked about how the standards of open banking need to be more standardised as we move into other countries and jurisdictions that are rolling out those changes. Um, for ClearBank and the type of customers that we work with, we work with other banks and e-money institutions. We're seeing a lot of what do I want to do for my payments infrastructure? How does that look? How does that feel? And how do I make sure it's future-proof in the market? And I think part of that then leads nicely into things like embedded finance and how can I leverage someone else's uh, sweet spot like payments or risk as a service or confirmation of paying overly end services to really enable me to do what I want to do for my end users. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some pressing topics and uh, as you say embedded finance, uh, a heart of discussion at this year's event uh, and that's what I want to talk a bit more about now uh, and there's no wonder it's at the heart of discussion because we've had some impressive uh, figures about um, its growth by 2030. Uh, so around that, what kind of disruption or areas should we keep an eye out for in the coming years? I think we're going to see some really interesting changes over the next few years, but also beyond in terms of how banks and corporates are going to interact with each other and manage day-to-day -day end use cases that we don't really see enough of as a consumer that sort of sits outside that space and doesn't really think much about the financial aspect. Um, Corporates, large corporates and retailers might look to step more into that banking as a service space using embedded finance to really drive forward their proposition and embed themselves in that customer wallet that they've already got a share of today. Uh, we talked about some really large global, um, global corporates looking at what they could do if they were to offer a bank, bank account for their customers. If Starbucks opened a current account, how would that change the, the financial space? How would that look? They've already got wallets that they can use for their customers. But what can they offer off the back of that that could really change it? And embedded finance teamed with open banking and, and the open access of APIs and integration with key partners like ClearBank and others in industry will really help to drive forward those changes, I think. And what about infrastructure? What sort of infrastructure are we seeing powering embedded finance? Yeah, so API first, of course, everyone mentions API first. is very important in terms of the speed to, to integrate and making sure that you're able to stay relevant in the financial services space and move quickly and effectively for your end users and your customers. But also, um, you've got to think about cloud technology and also potential portability of cloud. So at the moment, if you think of the two or three cloud players that you have in market today, how can you ensure that you're able to play in more than one space and offer stability whilst they are obviously very, very stable? How do we make sure that you can continue to operate if there was, for example, an instance where you'd need to switch cloud providers. How does that look and feel? So I think API and cloud technology, but also staying on top of that tech, as soon as you deliver code and, and put a product live, it's live, you've got to maintain it, you've got to own that infrastructure and make sure it stays relevant and, and user friendly, really. Some very good advice there. And I know on uh, the panel you were talking about who will be the winners and losers in this space. So let's touch on that. Uh, who do you think? They yeah. will be. <laughs> Absolutely. So the winners are undoubtedly going to be the consumers as whether or not they know it, they are ultimately benefiting from it today and they'll continue to see it through the seamless integration with their existing trusted partners, whoever you shop with for your food shop or like I mentioned earlier, a Starbucks or whoever. Um, so consumers are at the heart of everything that's being done anyway. But I also think that those that choose to partner rather than trying to do everything and focusing on what their proposition is and partnering with those that focus on a space that is not their proposition and their unique selling point will really see the benefit going forward. I think we're very clearly seeing the shift in terms of the big banks absolutely serve a purpose and have driven forward innovation to a certain point but in order to continue to grow you've got to diversify and, and partner to, to get them the best bang for your buck for consumers, I think. Again, very good advice and safe to say, watch this space. Absolutely. Uh, Hayley, I'll let you get back to the event. Thank you so much. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thanks.